is um, very nice to have it so clearly explained. And I really want to talk about things that aren't in the report as opposed to what are. Um, I know that we're on the cusp of some major changes that aren't factored into this, and that concerns me when we're doing modeling and looking out 25 or so years about missing the mark on some of the things that we're trying to predict. Um, one of those major changes is we're going into the fourth industrial revolution, and that is where we're going to see a huge change in how people do work, the very definition of a job, um, the kinds of jobs that are going to be available. There's some predictions that 50% of today's jobs will be gone in the next 10 years. Those kinds of things, I think, are serious in needing to factor in um, when we're looking at ratios and things like that. Um, I am getting very, very concerned about displacement of workers, even more so than displacement of homeowners or, or housing, because I think that is something we're not preparing for, and it's going to really change everything. Um, the other thing is recessions. We know recessions are cyclical, cyclical, and we're not factoring in recessions into the next 25 years. We saw the impact of the last one. It had massive implications, and to not sort of factor in and know that we're going to have some up and down cycles, I think, is going to steer us in the wrong direction, and especially in, in light of this fourth industrial revolution. And then the other big impact is the whole... Uh, change with self-driving cars. That is going to not only impact jobs, but it's going to impact commutes. It's going to impact where people live. There's all these things that are coming, and we're sort of like looking in the rearview mirror when we're doing our planning for this, and it makes me feel really nervous. Put on top of that, that it's inevitable we're going to have an earthquake. Likely, it could be in the next 25 years. And we, in, in, with virtually zero vacancy rate, are so underprepared for what's going to happen and how we would be able to house those people who get displaced, let alone the new people, that that feels like that's a huge error, not including some of that. Instead of always having this side plan for the earthquake, we need to be including it in all of our thinking going forward, in my opinion. Um, it's not a mystery that we don't have housing being built. We don't have housing being built because we are not doing things to allow housing to be built. Where I live, Sonoma County, we are told by the developers that if you gave us the land for free, we could not build because we can't make any money. There is so much regulatory restrictions and costs and fees that they can't. So you're worried about affordable housing? They can't afford to build market rate housing. And we need all housing of all kinds. So we need to seriously look at what are the barriers to people building. We have in Santa Rosa 3,000 units that have been approved, but they can't build it because it doesn't pencil. There's a reason we don't have housing, and I'm sure stories like that are from all over the Bay Area. So it's not just that we need to say we want these more housing. We have lots of housing that people have fought for and put lots of money in, did the planning and paid all the fees, and they can't build it. There's a problem, and we're not calling that out. And I think those are the kinds of things that feels like big errors of omission when we're trying to really go for it. And I'm looking at you, and I'm not – hopefully I don't – you don't feel picked on because I'm not trying to pick on you at all. Um, I've heard worse. <laughs> well, and, and it's not, I know it's not your fault, but, but you're the ones writing the report, man. I'm looking at you, Alex. I'm looking at everybody. The other thing is the way we have municipal finance, it doesn't pay for government to approve affordable housing. They, it costs them more money when these people come in to provide all the services. There's a flaw there. How can we ask people to encourage something they know it's going to hurt their city? So we need to fix that. We need to seriously look at what are the obstacles, what are the challenges, what are the barriers, and do something about it. And not just think magic something is going to happen. It's a lot more than magic money that needs to happen. So I get frustrated when I seriously want to solve the problem, and I feel like we're nibbling around the edges. Yeah, so these are, these are really pretty slides. They're really good. I like the ratios. But it's not, it's not going to get us where we need to go. And lastly, when we look at transportation, there's other things we know we could do. Yeah, you've gotten some money. We don't have a lot of money. I mean, I'm crazy how little money we're getting for transportation right now and, and at both the federal and state level. So, yeah, you have money compared to housing, but it's still paltry and not going to do the trick. And we should be looking at things like how do we make our transportation dollars work for us, such as consolidating all the transportation uh, transit agencies. 
26 transit agencies? It's ridiculous. We should do something about that. We also need to look at raising the cap for sales tax. You want local counties to pass sales tax? Almost every county is getting near the cap now. What are we going to do? So we need to get everybody at the state level to understand if you don't raise the cap, we're not going to give you the local money, the matching money. And we need to lower the threshold to 55% for transportation. I mean, these are the kinds of things when you really want to solve the problem, these are the things that I'm interested in trying to help on.